Hey YouTube. Um, yeah, today's video. We got a um, Briggs and Stratton 8 horsepower overhead valve uh, motor on my little wonder blower here. And the guys came back and said that uh, blowing along with it, the next thing you know, it just started, it just died. And when they tried to start, it started backfiring. Um, wouldn't run, just pop, 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 pop. <clears throat> So I took it apart and pulled the head off, or pulled the valve cover off, and here's what I found. One push rod is bent, the other one is snapped in half. And what happened was, let's see, this valve right here, the valve guide, actually came out of the bore and slid up and got in between the top of the valve spring and the bottom of it wouldn't allow the rocker to move this valve up and down anymore so instead it just snapped that uh, that push rod in half broke it and then uh, obviously in turn bent this one so <clears throat> I've already had this apart I already a new head I got it here in a box and I just kinda wanna show you what happened here uh, talking to my guy he says that uh, this is because of this um, the, uh, the new fuel with the ethanol in it, uh, it's making these valve guides slide out of their slide out of their bore. This is happening a lot. So, but anyways, uh, what we got here is with these um, these little eight horsepower motors, you don't really need a spring compression tool. I'm just gonna lump up a rag under here on my lap, something for the valve to sit on. Which one am I taking out? This one. So. The rag underneath the valve and just push down on the spring. I'm going to need two hands, but see these two keepers right there? I'm going to push down with my hand and then knock those keepers out of the way and the spring will come up and I'll show you that in a second. Actually with my my hand on it, I put my thumb, put my thumb on the valve, put both thumbs on the valve and four fingers on here and pushed on either side real hard as it was upside down and the keepers popped out and they just fell in the box here I have new ones so I don't really care but then the spring the spring comes out and you can see here that's your valve guide Oop. right there this is this is the valve guide and that slid all the way up to right about here it was popped right up out of here not letting that spring compress and push that valve open so that's what happened. I have since pushed that back down and I'm sure in a jam I could probably make this work but I was told that once that came out it's probably gonna go back in, it's probably gonna pop out again. Uh, sometimes they take a chisel and they they kinda whack at the corners here and kinda push the the aluminum on the um, on the head into the keeper to hold it in there but for $150, I got a new head and all new guts and new gaskets and everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So in this video, I'm just going to get the new head out and put it all together and put the motor back together and show you how to do that. All right, I opened up the kit and the first thing that came out was the head and the valves. The valves and springs and everything, keepers are, and everything are already installed. So that's kind of cool. Didn't have to play with any of that. But uh, So that's ready to go. Uh, they give you a gasket set. Uh, a lot of these gaskets you don't need. Um, you know, they, they for different types of heads they have different size hardware and gaskets for them. And then the uh, hardware is over here. And this is, you know, to hold on your muffler, to hold on the head. Um, no, I'm sorry, there's no head bolts. I'm using the old ones. Um, you know, muffler, carburetor, uh, all sorts of different bolts to put everything in. Uh, you got my push rods, tappets, not going to use the tappets, they're fine on this, mo on this one. And then the new rockers and bolts and everything for that, different size bolts for different applications. So this is pretty straightforward to put it back together, so we're just going to go ahead and scrape the old gasket off and get to work. So let me get that off and then we'll go. Okay, so I got the gasket off and then I'm just kind of really just inspecting this all to make sure there's no pieces of aluminum from the push rods anywhere making sure there's no scratches top of the piston looks fine <clears throat> cylinder walls look good um, 
So I'm just going to clean this off with some emery, I think, and then uh, put the gasket on and we'll go from there. With a little bit of elbow grease and a little wire wheel, I was able to get this cleaned up really good. Top of the piston came out nice and clean. All the, all the black and burnt stuff all over it. Carbon is all gone and you can see there's no pitting or anything on it. There's still a little bit of residual carbon left behind but that's it. Everything's in real good shape. Cylinder's in real good shape. So we're ready to go. I'm just going to get this head on here and then we'll go through that. I didn't have the torque specs on the uh, head bolts but uh, I called the dealer up and they seem to think it's right around 14 and a half foot pounds of torque about 178 inch pounds I think it was um, so I just went around in a in a pattern you know not not one right next to each other just across uh, X pattern kinda like you were doing lug nuts on a car <clears throat> and uh, I think that should work so now we're gonna go ahead and put in the uh, push rods and the rockers so we'll go from there all right so a little assembly lube uh, inside of the rockers here screw these down there's quite a bit of slop on here so I had to actually adjust it by knocking this nut loose and tightening that onto the push rod to take out the slack you don't want to go too much because you don't want a valve hanging up so there's a feeler gauge you can put in here, but I didn't do that. We're going to get her fired up and see what it sounds like and maybe adjust it from there. But I think, uh, I think we're pretty good because I can, still, I can still move these a little bit. It's not pushing the valves down at all, so we should be, able, we should be good to go. So we're going to start installing the rest of this garbage and we'll get her fired up. Uh, valve covers on and new gaskets in and torque down and everything. The next thing to do is, before you put the carb on, you got to put the shroud back on. Unless you take the float bowl off the carburetor, this won't go on with the carburetor there. And it's okay to take the float bowl off the carburetor, but there's a, there's a spring inside there that you have to get lined up. So it's much easier to just have the carburetor off. Um, from taking this apart the other day, I learned that. so. Um, Carburetor's in a box, ready to go, and we're going to put this on here, a couple of machine screws around the outside, and then we'll put the carburetor on. Alright, recoil and fan shroud are on, and like I said, here's where the carburetor goes and the float bowl sticks around here. So it's a good thing to uh, put the carburetor on afterwards, and we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that the carburetor's on, uh, before you slide the carburetor on you kind of got to work it around this throttle linkage because the linkage is bent further than a 90 you can't just you can't just stick it through the hole you got to kind of thread it on a little bit and then once you put that on you can slide the carburetor on and it came with two different size bolt or two different size uh, um, fasteners to hold these things on and you can see that there's this uh, little stop inside here this whole thing screws into the block <clears throat> and then a special socket goes on the end of here but I don't have I don't have one that small so I'm just gonna use a you know pair of channel locks or something just to snug these up and then once the air box goes on the nuts uh, that screw on here will tighten everything up and then the governor the governor spring this one here goes in that little tiny hole there and you can just kinda manipulate that with your fingers uh, fuel line and then the uh, breather hose will go on the back of the air box so let's go put the air box on and See if we can't get this thing started. All right, now the air cleaner and the carburetor are on. Um, we're almost ready to start it. Just got to put on this filler piece here, a little shroud, and then the uh, the handles. All right, so that's all done. Everything's all on there. Had a leak at the uh, float bowl. Um, one of the screws wasn't tightened all the way, so it seemed to have really gotten that figured out. So let's choke it. Bring it to low idle. There you go. Okay. 
fixed up, ready to go. So that's that for that project. Next one is that one. Just got that truck. We're gonna put a plow on it. In fact, I just got that plow last night. I'm gonna put that plow on that truck. Show you how to wire it up and uh, get it all working. So until next time, rate, comment, subscribe. Have a good day.